Hi, I'm Professor Baldwin, and today I'm going to teach you applications of linear equations and modeling. You may have seen a linear equation written as y equals mx plus b format. That's called slope-intercept form. Today we're going to learn about point-slope form, which is written y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. It's aligned with the slope m, and it passes through the point x1, y1. For the next two examples, we're going to use point-slope formula to write an equation of the line having the given conditions, and then we're going to put it into slope-intercept form, if possible. This first line passes through negative 1, 0, which is an x-intercept, and has a slope of 2 thirds. Using point-slope formula, we have y minus the y-coordinate, 0, equals the slope of 2 thirds times x minus the x-coordinate, negative 1. Now we simplify y equals 2 thirds times x minus negative 1 is plus 1. And we'll distribute the 2 thirds through the parentheses to get y equals 2 thirds x plus 2 thirds. And notice that this is simplified into slope intercept form already. So the slope is 2 thirds still, and the intercept now, the y intercept, is 2 thirds. Example 2 we need it to pass through the point 3, negative 4 and have a slope of 0. Okay, so we have y minus the y-coordinate, negative 4, equals the slope of 0 times x minus the x-coordinate of 3. y minus negative 4 is y plus 4 equals 0 times x minus 3. 0 times anything is 0. Let's subtract 4 from both sides, and this is the line y equals negative 4. Well, that makes sense, right? Because a slope of 0 is going to be a horizontal line. So this is a horizontal line at y equals negative 4. And this is actually simplified into slope-intercept form. The slope is 0, and the y-intercept is negative 4. Now, two types of lines we're going to talk about, parallel lines and perpendicular lines. Parallel lines are two lines that have the exact same slope. And because the slopes are the same, they're never going to intersect. So the slope of line 1 is equal to the slope of line 2. Perpendicular lines, the slopes are negative inverses. So if m1 is the slope of our first line, the slope for m2 is going to be negative 1 over m1, or m1 times m2 will always equal negative 1. Let's find the slope of a line that is parallel and the slope of a line that is perpendicular to a given slope. Here the slope is 3 elevenths. A line that's parallel will have a slope that is exactly the same, 3 elevenths. But a line that's perpendicular will have a slope that's equal to the negative inverse. So it's the reciprocal. It's going to be negative 11 thirds. Knowing what the slopes look like for parallel and perpendicular lines is important because you could be given equations of lines, like this example, and you need to determine if they're parallel or perpendicular, or neither. And to do that, we only need to look at the slope of each. So our first line is y equals 2x minus 3. We only care about the slope here. The slope of this line is 2. Now in example 1, y equals negative 1 half x plus 7. 
This is in slope intercept form. So we can identify that the slope equals negative one halves. Is that slope parallel to the given slope? No, to be parallel, they have to be exactly the same. Is it perpendicular? Yes, this is perpendicular. We know it's perpendicular because we can multiply them together and we get negative one, or you can see that the second slope is the negative inverse of the given slope. In example two, our slope is equal to negative two. This is just the opposite of our given slope. So it's not parallel and it's not perpendicular. So we would say that this line is neither. It's neither parallel nor perpendicular. What if you're given some conditions for a line and you need to write the equation for that line in slope intercept form? And then we're gonna convert it into standard form. So in this example, we want a line that passes through the point six, negative four, and it needs to be perpendicular to the given line x minus five y equals one. Well, to be perpendicular, we need to know the slope of the given line. And to find the slope of the given line, we need to put it in slope intercept form. So we need to solve this or rewrite it for y. Let's subtract x from both sides, and we have negative 5y equals negative x plus 1. If we divide everything by negative 5, we get y equals x over 5 minus 1 fifth, or y equals 1 fifth x minus 1 fifth. So the slope of our given line is one fifth. So the slope of our perpendicular line is going to be negative inverse or the negative reciprocal, negative five. We know the slope of our new line and we know the point that it has to pass through. So let's use our point slope formula to get the equation. That's going to be y minus our y one equals the slope times x minus our x-coordinate. That simplifies to y plus four equals negative five x plus 30. Let's subtract four from both sides and we get the slope intercept form, which is y equals negative five x plus 26. But we also want to put it in standard form, right? Standard form is ax plus by equals c. To do that, we're just going to add 5x to both sides. So we have 5x plus y equals 26. So you have slope intercept form, and then you have standard form. Let's look at an application. You need to know a linear cost function. A linear cost function says cost C is equal to MX plus B. Well, M is the variable cost times X units plus B, which is the fixed cost. Look at this example. We have a parking garage in a large city. The charge for parking consists of a flat fee of $2. The flat fee is a fixed cost, so that's B. And then they charge $1.50 per hour. That's our slope times the number of hours. For part A, we wanna write a linear function to model the cost for parking, P of T for T hours. So P of T would equal our variable cost, $1.50, times the units, that's per hour, plus a fixed cost, which is the $2 flat fee. And in part B, we want to evaluate P of 1.6, which says 
1.5 times 1.6 plus 2. And that's 2.4 plus 2 or 4.4. Well, now we need to interpret the meaning of B. So what is 1.6 and what is 4.4? 4.4 is the cost, so it will cost $4.40 to park for 1.6 hours, right? T was the number of hours that we evaluated it for, 1.6. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this video helpful and I hope you'll go check out some of my other videos.